Okay, guys, I'm here today for Jerry Jessup and Eli Knight. Huge honor for me. Guys, they have an amazing uh, YouTube channel, The Knight Jiu Jitsu. And uh, it's very interesting because they teach Jiu Jitsu for self defense. And they do an amazing job doing that. And uh, so today they're shooting an entire instructional course all about Kimura for self defense. And uh, can you explain a little more about that, Eli? Well, Kimura, it makes, it's a really valuable tool. It's a great submission, it's powerful. There's, you can hit it from so many different places and there's a lot of versatility to it just in submission grappling and sports jiu-jitsu. The reason that we're isolating this in a self-defense context is because there are some little considerations you have to make positionally whenever you're talking about it in self-defense context. So what, what's the difference is we think about strikes, we think about kind of environmental factors, situational kind of things. What if somebody else is maybe in proximity that could jump in and join us? What if the guy has a weapon? And so Kimura becomes an extremely valuable tool in this kind of context. So I thought we would show, if that's cool, we'd show like a couple of different entries into it, how, how we might get into it from somebody from in the guard trying to strike. Right? That's awesome. So that's uh, awesome. Jerry's going to show one that he likes. He calls it the swan dive. <laughs> so this swan dive here is uh, useful. Uh, if, he, if the guy postures up, he's trying to bash my face in, right? So I'm going to put the hands together, essentially like, uh, like I'm doing a swan dive or like I'm praying. And I'm gonna use my legs, I'm gonna cross my ankles kind of low to uproot him, right? So my hands are gonna go between the ear and the shoulder. I'm gonna pull my knees to my chest and then kind of fan out and hook either at the lat or between the elbow and shoulder right here to make a nice uh, little connection. This makes it difficult for, uh, for him to punch me. And now if he decides to sit up, I can ride that to start sitting up for a, a Kimura situation here. So That's awesome. Oh, I'm all wind, fan out. If I can, sometimes I can grab the shin. Uh, that just depends on your body type, but if it allows you to do so. But if not, I can just hold right here at the lat and uh, keep a good secure connection right here. As he goes to sit up, I'm going to uncross and find the wrist. I'll slide my hip all the way out to the wrist and then bring my hand over and make the, the connection. As I lay back, I want to lay back, not into this arm, because he can, he can resist that. I lay back over the line between his knee and his hand. And that's going to pull his center over his foundation, which drives his weight into me, allowing me to trap the foot to further isolate so he doesn't roll out. Then I bring my legs up and cross, and my hips go deep underneath the shoulder, and that allows me to rotate, pulling the bottom shoulder away and connecting all this to my center of mass. So, Jared, so when, when you do, when you put your both hands together, you're pretty much like first. First, you worry about the punch. You don't want to get punched in the mm -hmm. face. And then, as soon as you block his punch, you want to put him in a position that he can't punch you again, right? Yes. And that's the time you have your armpit over his back. Yeah, if I have my arm over the back of the head and over his arm, and now for him to access me, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to hit me hard, right? And if he's going to hit with anything, it's going to be this far side arm right here, got it. which uh, he'll have to really raise himself up, which loads the Kimura up for me. I right? oh, got it. Man, that's awesome. Now, you developed that, Andrew? Oh, um... Uh, what I wouldn't say I developed it myself. Yeah. Uh, it's bits and pieces. Yeah, bits and pieces like, from uh, trying to. Yeah. It's like, like uh, I mean, like of course I have seen the Kimura, and uh, I have seen many people avoiding points like that as well. But that kind of transition where you have the armpit over the back mm -hmm. and creating the space in the way you did to go to the Kimura, that was very unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a, like a long education. We've been doing this for a very long time, and so you know it's like you know, this instructor or this situation or just something organically that we come across and, you know, we all kind of formulate it together and we find what works kind of best for us and also what works best to like modify for our students and training partners okay. and stuff. Yeah, and for yeah, pressure awesome. testing too, you know, what, uh, uh, it, it doesn't feel the same when you're rolling with strikes as whenever you're rolling without strikes. I agree 100%. So, yeah. uh, we, we'd like to keep the guy's posture broken down to begin with. I mean, we would like it to... If, you know, I don't want him to be able to raise because then the timing becomes more of a factor. So I'd like to keep him down here. But if there does become that separation where he could potentially strike, then I have to think about now how can I monitor and everything else. And so sometimes too, like if he rears back on the side, then I can come here and cover. So this is kind of doing something similar to what Jerry was talking about too. I'm going between his ear and his shoulder and I'm covering here so it takes some of it off. And then this is also on this side here. What I'm doing though is when I don't want him crashing back down whenever I pull him back in and accidentally or on purpose headbutting right. me too. So whenever that happens, then we can kind of come up through this section. So it's essentially com accomplishing the same thing. And then from here, you know, like Jared was mentioning the shin pin, if I can't quite reach that, maybe I go to the near side. And then right. we have this kind of shoulder staple position or this like almost like Sean Williams guard happening here. So another variation that we looked at from here, for me to be able to access, I don't want to let go. So I'm going to switch my grip inside and keep this staple down. That's right. 
back and find the Kimura opportunity back here like this. I can finish one-handed with the shoulder pressure here or possibly open up and come back and finish. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. No, I, I love like how you stuck him in, this, you know, in a way that he can't punch you anymore. And he, can, he can't do anything. He can't do head. He can hit you with the head, nothing. Well, well that's what we're thinking because we're, we're going two on one. So we're isolating this one arm of his. So we have to really think about if it's a self-defense context, then what, what can we do to minimize the ability for him with that free arm to be able to damage, right? Got it. No, that's awesome. Yeah, so guys, they just shot an entire instructional all about Kimura for self-defense. So I, I, I truly believe that Kimura can be one of the best options that we have for self-defense. So they're the ones who study like Jiu-Jitsu for self-defense, self-defense for Jiu-Jitsu, and etc. etc. So it's going to be at EffectiveSelfDefense.com and BGGFanatics.com. So make sure to check that out. And maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Man. Thanks so much Thanks for coming. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.